There are historians who look upon the USS Albacore as the world's first modern submarine. She was built in 1953 and served the U.S. Navy as an experimental vessel used for testing new innovations in submarine design and technology. Before Albacore, subs were basically surface vessels that could submerge. After Albacore, everything changed in the world of submarines. She was going over 20 knots, some sources say over 30. Her top speed is still classified to this day. So she is what we would call a landmark, if you will, because she is the first of the new generation of submarines that came along. There isn't a sub in the world today, it doesn't matter which navy we're talking about, that doesn't base their design on Albacore's lines. She had this very distinct teardrop-shaped hull, which was so important for making her more hydrodynamic and moving through the water much faster. Albacore's illustrious naval service only underscored the sad condition to which she fell after being decommissioned in 1972. The Navy considered using the sub as a target of destruction. A group of citizens near the Albacore's birthplace at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard in Maine were able to convince the Navy to allow the sub to go on display at nearby Portsmouth, New Hampshire. The Portsmouth Submarine Memorial Association saved the vessel, but her situation in Albacore Park was a work in progress. Well, it was kind of always intended to have Albacore in a better basin. If you had been here at this time last year, what you would have seen really looked like a spaceship that fell from the heavens and was sitting in a crater. And the reason for that was when she was moved here 30 years ago, they had a lot of complications with the cradle and the marine railroad they had built to bring her in. Those problems and the corrective measures we had to undertake in order to get Albacore in here ate up a lot of the money. And so for the last three decades, it's why she looked like she was sitting in a crater because we never had the chance to finish her off. So this was something that was always on our radar screen. An ongoing mission that had been set in motion by the association in 2008 finally came to fruition seven years later with plans and funding for a site upgrade at Albacore Park. That's when Chimbro got involved. Well, Chimbro entered the scene um, during the initial bidding process. We were looking to see who could do this. And what we discovered with Chimbro was that, number one, we were dealing with uh, the most professional of all the groups that we were looking at. We were four final contestants, and Chimbro really made it easy. Jimbro came out with some excellent, sensible plans, nothing grandiose that was within our budget. So it was an easy choice at the end. There really was no major hemming and hawing and debating. It was the best service by far and at a very reasonable price for what was being done. Well, they planned this for a year. They've been working the details out. We were briefed, you know, this is very important for this client. We want them to have a good job and we want it to be pretty when you're done. And uh, we liked it. I think we do that anyway, but, you know, that's what they sent us here to try to do. And, uh, we were glad to do it. But yeah, there, there was architects to please and, and our client. Just like when you have, maybe when you have custom cabinets built, you declare what you'd like to see and you had people that said, this is how we can give it to you. Would you like this? You know, like so. What we wanted in the final product was something that was going to, number one, be very worry-free on the maintenance. Our board members are composed of gentlemen who actually served aboard Albacore, gentlemen who were working on her at the shipyard when she was in active service, men who designed her. Now they have a real love for this vessel, and the unfortunate reality is these gentlemen are getting older. And the board was looking in the future for seeing a time when we wouldn't have folks with a direct, intimate knowledge of the workings of this vessel who were going to be having to take care of her. So as part of setting a course for the future, they wanted to go ahead and create a basin that would not require any real maintenance. We also wanted something that was going to be aesthetically pleasing, something that would have a vague sense of nautical history. When you look at the basin, you kind of get the sense that she's in dry dock. It's not meant to look like a dry dock, it's not intended to, but it is meant to give that air. And that's very important, because Albacore spent a lot of time in dry dock, given that she was an experimental platform. So when she wasn't at sea, she was in dry dock, they were taking systems off, putting on new systems, etc. And then, of course, there was just the fact we needed something that would also work. Water pools up in this basin like crazy. So we really needed to go ahead and get something that would pump the water out effectively, collect it, and get it as far away from the, the skin of the vessel as we could. 
There's a lot of incredible site work steps that the Shaw Brothers people did here. Much work in the sewers and utilities that no one will ever see. And Route 1 is just the other side of the submarine, so it's pretty tight there. Uh, they came in on crane mats, a lot of clay in this ground. Just to put concrete on the backside, we brought the Independence 61 meter pump truck in here, which 200 foot reach. Every bit of the concrete had to be placed by pump trucks. You know, this is a tricky wall, certainly. You know, with its, uh, there's not a straight line in it, and there's not a flat wall in it. It's, I don't know if you would call it a helix, but there is, it's just, it's flat, but it constantly rises up and around the submarine, and constantly is in a curve. There are like eight different radiuses, so this curve was established by uh, my respected friend John Garvin from Shaw, but they, they have a satellite. We walked around the existing sidewalk and it plants the line for you. You measure from that, we put many big timber spikes along cords, the strings, and built to that. It also records the elevations of the land and the contours. So when we shot great on the wall, we had to take the curse off from that, let's say, to keep that nice horizon line so that it didn't roll up and down in the fence with it. And uh, hopefully everyone enjoys the sight line when they walk here. Well, they expect to see the albacore displayed in a way that's more fitting. We really think that this vessel deserves more. So rather than just being kind of like a roadside tourist attraction, folks now know that they're entering almost a hallowed space and that this is a vessel that in every way, manner, shape, or form is just as important as the first rockets that brought man into space. After all, she was being built at the same time, and it was and still is groundbreaking technology. Um, we're still learning from Albacore today. The Navy still performs experiments from time to time on her. So we want folks to really get that sense of majesty that this vessel deserves. And the summary of things you do in your life, this is one that I'll remember for sure.